Okay, now the other thing, in terms of lasting lifelong partnership that is essential, is there must be a sustainable passion in the relationship. Both people must want to be there. Desire energy must be engaged mutually. If one person wants to be there and the other person doesn't, it's not going to work. And that desire energy needs to be renewed constantly. You know that statement, familiarity breeds contempt? You know, you're hanging out with a person all the time then all of a sudden you lose touch with that desire that brought you into the relationship. Well, if it's going to be a sustainable, lifelong relationship, desire must be constantly rekindled. Because that desire is what keeps us in the relationship. That means, ultimately, when we're talking about a spiritual relationship, ultimately all the chakras need to be engaged. Because spiritual is about the whole picture. It's not about just having a good sex life and not being able to talk to each other. A relationship like that, it might work for a while, it might meet some needs, but it's not going to last very long. And you need to have that, that physical sense of safety and, and passion, connection. You need to have the emotional sense of safety and connection. You need to be able to talk with each other, understand the other person's experience, hold the space. And you need to be working towards similar goals in life and have a similar desire for what's important to each of you. So all the chakras need to be there. Okay, the other thing that has to happen, and you know, you may not be interested in uh, creating a lifelong relationship, and if that's the case, then some of this may not apply. But if you are, then um, it's important that each person have the space in the relationship to self-actualize to express their unique talents and gifts. The relationship is not just a birthing chamber for one person. The relationship is a birthing chamber for both people, empowering both to step forward and realize their unique gifts. That's part of its function. And there may be gifts that they are able to share and express together. But it's never about just one person's gifts. It's about both the gifts that both people are here to share. Another thing that's profoundly important that we've already touched on is that the partnership needs to be grounded, realistic, not airy-fairy, not this big romantic bubble that's going to get burst. You know, there are going to be practical challenges every day in the relationship. So there has to be a way of working through those challenges, moment to moment, day by day. If you don't work them through, then they pile up. And there's a lot of resentment that begins to be carried by both people. If you hold on to this romantic ideal that the relationship's supposed to be easy and just work by itself, forget it. You know, sometimes it will work by itself, but sometimes it won't. So you got to be realistic. When those times happen where it doesn't just work, then you have work to do together. Okay? The relationship is the vehicle, the vehicle that you have chosen to come into your own power and purpose. Think about that. That's very, very deep and profound. You could choose. You could say, look, 
I'm committed to my career. I'm committed to my creative expression. I know a relationship takes a lot of time and energy. And I'm not sure I want to give that much time and energy to my relationship. So I will choose a pathway as a single person. And I will put, make my own spiritual development, my own creative expression, number one in my life. And relationship will be number two. And if I get in relationship with somebody who wants more than what I can give, I will say, sorry, can't do that. My main commitment is to myself. Everybody's free to take that path, the solo path. It's an option. Regardless of what society says to you, <laughs> you are free to make that choice if that's the choice that works for you. And for some people, that is the choice that works. But if you choose to be in relationship, then what you are saying is, I will find my power and purpose through the vehicle of this relationship. That's extraordinarily powerful. That's a huge commitment. It's a commitment not just to you, but to being with the other person in a process, in a transformational process. It's going to take enormous patience. If you make the commitment to yourself, it takes enormous patience with yourself. You have ups and downs. There are times when you don't believe in yourself, when you don't want to put your foot out the door, right? You want to just go hide. That's going to happen to you anyway. If you're in a relationship, that kind of stuff is going to come up in the relationship too. Sometimes you're going to look at the other person, what am I doing with this person? That's just the reality, you know, and maybe you need a day to yourself so you can remember what you're doing with that person. Hmm? But what an incredible commitment to say, this relationship is the container energy for my individuation in this lifetime. Whoa. <laughs> When you are able to say that, you know you are on a relationship path. You are on a soulmate path. You're choosing to share the deepest and most intimate parts of yourself with another human being, to become completely visible and vulnerable. Both of you.